In this video, I'm gonna take you through how you can set up audible warnings to assess your signal strength for the Express LRS protocol. We're gonna set things up in a way that you have multiple warnings as you're getting farther away to kind of assess where your signal strength is at and ultimately have a good indication before that link quality just drops off the edge and you ultimately have a fail safe. Now I'll drop a link down below to this website. This is the Express LRS Wiki on assessing your signal strength and you can see it's gonna cover things like your RSSI and link quality indicator. It also has some information you may need to reference depending on how close you wanna to get to the edge on this of your different speeds and then what the sensitivity limits are on these. And it also talks about your signal to noise ratio, which we're gonna talk about here as well. What we wanna be able to do in this is take the knowledge out of this, plug that into our Edge TX or OpenTX compatible radio and have it give us audible warnings of these different parameters at the appropriate time. Now, one of the first things we're gonna use is the dynamic power setting that Express LRS uses. We can have the radio audibly call out when it's stepping up through those different power ranges, and those power ranges are gonna be triggered when the signal to noise ratio hits zero. It will step up to the next power setting. But for Express LRS to do that, you need to have the dynamic power enabled. So going into the back of your module, or using the Lua script, we can see here I have dynamic power enabled uh, and I have it here that I'm gonna set my max power is 500 milliwatts. This could go up on this specific uh, transmitter up to a thousand, set that whatever you'd like. And then here you just have a fan threshold when the fan actually starts to turn on. But we're gonna assume that you have this enabled in some way, shape or form that it's gonna step up to at least one different uh, increased power setting so that you, you know, you can kind of use that as an indication like, hey, I'm getting a little farther out. This thing's having to step up through the different power levels. Now, the next thing I want to do is go in to my radio settings here. I'm going to go over to page. Oh, what page is that? That's going to be page eight. And we have our logic switches. And we're going to want to set up this one right here. Can see i have it a little farther down we're going to talk about these others these rssi ones up here but this one is a, a somewhat unique maybe not used to it so we'll go ahead and uh, create a new one that's this and essentially is going to talk through what's going on here the logic switches essentially whenever this action occurs right here that causes it's almost like you're flicking a switch for this to to l 08 to flip on it's almost like it's a switch itself so essentially you know what is this logic here so let's go through and set that up i'm going to go use this logic 9 just for an example i'm going to click on this for function and the function i want is going to be the absolute change is going to be greater than x so this is the absolute change in some value is going to be greater than equal to x so i'm going to click on that I'm gonna click down here and I'm gonna set that to my transmitter power because it will automatically uh, adjust the transmitter power. Express LRS does that for us. Essentially, Express LRS will move this power setting up, this transmitter power setting up as it's monitoring the signal to noise ratio. And uh, like I said before, once that signal to noise ratio hits zero, it's gonna step up to the next power rating. So we're gonna use, we're gonna monitor the, the, the transmitter power that's a, a, a telemetry option we have in Express LRS and all hooked up. And then all I need to do is say, hey, if it changes by more than one milliwatt, go ahead and trigger this to activate the L09, uh, basically switch. And really it's just that simple. So again, once this power level changes at all anywhere, it more than one milliwatt, uh, it, which it's gonna go from 25 to 50 to 100 to 250 to 500 to, uh, one watt, this will, obviously that change is gonna be greater than one milliwatt, so it's gonna trigger the L09 switch to toggle. Next, we're gonna go over into our special functions. You can see I have a bunch here, but we'll go down basically to a new one. I'm gonna go down to a, a, a blank space here, and I'm gonna go click on that, and I want to change this to be L09. Okay, I got my L09 there, and I'm gonna just say play value. And I'm gonna say play value of my transmitter power level, back to that. And I don't want it to repeat. So this value here on this column, this is if you'd want it to keep repeating that value. So it would say 25 milliwatts. And then if I had it set to 10 as a, up here, 
10 seconds later, it would say 25 milliwatts again. We don't want it to do that. I just want it to say it once, but if you did want it to say it multiple times, you could set this value to some interval that you wanted it to, uh, to uh, repeat it at. And that's it for that one. So as we get farther away, my radio will audibly call out when it goes from 25 milliwatts to 50 milliwatts to 100 milliwatts to 250 milliwatts and then up to 500 milliwatts. And I will hear that and I will kind of know as I'm getting farther away, hey, once I'm up against the 500 milliwatts setting, yeah, I, from there, that's, that's as much power as we can give it. And from there, my signal strength is going to kind of degrade because as it was degrading previously, I would step up that power level to kind of get some of that, that back. Now, one thing that I do experience on my radio, for some reason, for 50 milliwatts, it calls out as zero milliwatts. I don't know why. It calls out 20, fine. It calls out, well, it doesn't, it calls out 50 as zero. And then it calls out 100, 250, and 500 just fine. But for some reason, zero means 50. I just know that. So whenever it says zero milliwatts, I know it really means 50 milliwatts. So if you know why it's doing that to me or you have a solution to that, let me know. I'd, I'd love to know. And it's not just calling out 50 milliwatts. It reads it on telemetry as zero. So I don't know. Now, the next thing we're going to look at here that's really important is the receiver quality indicator. So... Just so you know, anything with an R in front of it, like R, S, N, R, that's on the receiver side, receiver side. This is T for transmitter side. So we're interested for everything else on the receiver side. So it would be R, S, N, R, R link quality. Now, uh, in this one, it's one uh, received signal strength indicator. They, they chopped off the I, but uh, one is for antenna one, two is for antenna two. If you only have one antenna, uh, two RSSI, which we're not using here, isn't useful for anything. So it just one RSSI is the only one that's actually going to have a measurement that you're going to get uh, back in the, in the telemetry packets. Now for this one and the ones above, they're all pretty simple, but there is one little trick with this one. And honestly, between the power level and then the signal quality, those are really the two main ones you need. These are kind of icing on the cake. So I'm going to talk about this one next. For this one, we're going to just go in and hit edit so you can see what's going on in there. The function we're going to want there is A is less than X. So A means variable 1 is going to be less than X, which is variable 2 of 50%. So if my receiver uh, quality indicator of how many packets are coming through, so if less than 50% of the packets are coming through, then it will indicate, you know, it will make L07 trigger. The only reason we have this delay in here in 0.05 is that when you turn on your radio, if you have this set to zero, like we had before, just the three lines, it will call out zero right off the bat as your module is kind of booting up as your radio is turning on at the same time. So if you just put a small delay here, looks like 0.05 seconds works for me, then it won't do that when you first start up your radio. Now this value here, mileage may vary on what you want to use here. This is for a wing setup for me. So I don't need it to, uh, it, I'm not doing like freestyle, you know, with a quad or anything on, on this setup. If you're doing more aggressive flying, you probably want to have this higher, more like 70 or 80. Uh, again, set that to wherever you want. That's 50%. It's not going to call out until 50% of the packets aren't coming through. If you want that to call out when only 80% of the packets are coming through or 90% of the packets coming through, obviously you can just boost this number up uh, pretty easily. Now, as before, we're going to go into the special functions here. I have one set up already and we'll just go into that. You set that at seven. Then I had to play the variable. Uh, it's going to play the actual receiver quality. And we're not looking for the plus or minus numbers. Those are going to give you the highest and lowest out of the entire flight or session while the radio is on. We just want the actual number. That's the received uh, quality indicator as it is um, at the moment. And since that is triggering that L07, anytime it's below that 50%, anytime it's below the 50%, I'm going to have that read out every 20 seconds. So as long as I stay below that, every 20 seconds is going to give me another, you know, another indicator of where that number is. Uh, again, if you want this to read out every five seconds, every one second, that's totally up to you, but that's what this number is right here. Uh, if I was just setting this up for a mini quad, I'd have this be more aggressive, but a fixed wing, you know, farther out, it's kind of just floating around doing some stuff. Um, it's not that critical that I have it chirping in my ear every 10 seconds. 
So if you're looking for a concise setup, that's about it. Really adding that power limit is your precursor indicator, like, hey, I'm getting a little bit farther out there. That uh, received quality indicator can drop off fairly quick. So depending on the scenario, it you know, you know you're at the highest power level, you know you're kind of in jeopardy already. Hopefully you're somewhat flying a little bit more cautiously at that point, um, and you kind of know where you're at. Yes, the uh, quality indicator, if you set that higher, it will give you a little bit more time before you fail safe, but that can drop off pretty rapidly. But depending on your situation, uh, it can give you a lot of advanced warning with that power level and with that uh, quality indicator. Your RSSI value is then your third thing that if you want some more information coming back, and that is somewhat built into your OpenTX radio already. So if we go out here to page 11, that little smudge up there uh you can see here that this is already set to you know open tx edge tx is already set up by default to have an rssi indicator now these are generic uh numerical values but from my testing they seem to be pretty close to recognizing when your dbi uh your negative DB is getting up to or as low as something like a negative 90, negative 95, negative 100, that this is starting to chime in here already. Um, and it seems like, for my test at least, that my link quality is dropping off pretty rapidly once these things are starting to chime in. So they seem by default pretty good. But do see on here, if you wanted a more accurate number and just use the negative DB value, which we're gonna show here in a second, you can check to disable this alarm and then just disables all this uh, being in play here on page 11. So going back to here, you can see I have my RSSI one and I have a negative 92 DB setting here. And I just pop into there to see what you can see what that looks like. That's an A minus X, so it's my RSSI one, if it gets, less than, which would be more negative than 92 dB, it's gonna trigger the L5, and then we'll set up an audible callout for that as well. I do have a delay here of one second because I am reading off some other information, so you can start to stagger these. So if one thing's calling out, then the next thing's calling out, and you want it to call out in a certain order, you can just start to stagger these delays, and then they'll just keep that pattern of staggered readout uh, if you have that readout interval set the same on that special functions key, which we showed before. Now, this is where you may want to consult that link down below. The value that you want to set here is going to depend on what uh, the packet rate you're using here. Now, per the Express LRS, per this wiki, what you want to do is set it to be five to 10 dB greater, so that's less negative than this sensitivity limit. In this one, I'm running a 100 hertz refresh rate, again, for a fixed wing. So I'm gonna set this uh, presumably to 102 or, or something of that nature. And I do keep in mind in my setup, when I did that, my link quality indicator dropped off way ahead of this. Like I could not get this to essentially drop out uh, to get down to this, to those kind of levels, my uh, link quality indicator would dropped off way in advance of this. So keep that in mind as you're setting this up. And I would do some testing, you know, simply just set your model down without the VTX powered, walk away, you know, put it in the basement, walk upstairs, you know, go outside, start walking away, put your hand over the antennas and stuff like that to see how this all ends, ends up playing out. And while you're on this page, if you did want to then go even further, which I don't recommend, but you can use it to read out your, your signal to noise ratio. This takes into account background noise, uh, but I wouldn't say you'd need this because honestly, if you're using dynamic power, once this gets down to zero values, uh, and at least in this case, once it gets down below three, if it's 250 or in 500, uh, hertz refresh rate once it gets down below five, it's gonna jump the power levels up. So to some extent, by using the transmitter power level in the thing like we first set up, you know that you're hitting these lower limits for your uh, signal to noise ratio already, right? Or that power level wouldn't jump up. So to, essentially you don't really need to report this. But if you did want to, uh, again, this wiki page has, you know, what you should be setting that to. Uh, in this case, it's saying that, she, again, should be five to 10 
dB lower than this level. So this would be a negative number. This would be like negative five, negative 10 if you're at a 100 hertz uh, refresh rate in my case, or if you're 500 hertz, you'd set it to zero or negative five in that case. So back over to here, you can see I had that set at 92, a lower, or which is a more positive number, I guess, uh, which is a, a less negative number I, is the other way to say it. Um, just because I was not getting down, this this RSSI1 just was not really dropping uh, that much before my received quality indicator would kind of drop off the face of the earth and I'd have a fail safe. So there was no point in having it set so high. But in here you can see as well, if you wanted to set up similarly your signal to noise ratio, your receive si receiver signal to noise ratio, uh, you can see it's set up the exact same way, A minus X, receiver signal to noise ratio. And then again, you'd be consulting that chart. Here I have it set at negative five dB, which seemed about right, honestly, once I was getting down to that level, uh, things were really starting to fall apart and that uh, link quality indicator was really going to trash. Uh, here I just have a three second delay, so it's delayed uh, out a little bit farther. I actually am probably gonna get rid of this. I just wanted to show this for this video. Uh, just for an example of what you can do with it. For setting up the audible alarms, pretty straightforward. You just tell it, hey, if, if it's L5 for the logical function I'm using, it's gonna play the value. It's gonna play the value of the one RSSI. It's gonna do that every 20 seconds. Same thing, the logical function. If this L06 triggers, it's gonna play the value of the receiver signal to noise ratio. It's gonna do that every 20 seconds. And then we already talked about the link quality and the transmitter power. Again, I would probably say that the only two I'm going to end up keeping set up on this is my transmitter power, is my link quality. This is already kind of covered pretty well in just the default Edge TX and OpenTX setup with those uh, 42 and 45 settings that seem to be close enough to start giving me some warnings like, hey, that's, and then this is uh, really not needed because you know, how many how many things do you need to tell you that hey you're you're near the edge you're going to fail safe here at any given moment so we got enough warnings here going on uh, that I would definitely be looking at my OSD at that point. If you don't mind, give this video a like, give it a comment down below. Anyways, helps out with the analytics. Share it around, uh, all that good stuff. Thanks everybody. We'll see you on the next one.